So, why God? The why there is, I can ask another question, why not accept what God's Son did for you? On the other hand, few will decide to believe. Narrow is the path. I thought of that for many years. Why is the path so narrow? It's so obvious. People are disposed. Fortunately, God got to you. And you were persuaded to believe. Most, like the guy talking to the pool, he's turned off and placated me because we were talking about swimming and I was teaching him about swimming. He didn't want to break that thing off because I have a different philosophy. But I told him the Bible's philosophy without telling him it was the Bible's philosophy. How did I do that? I said, wouldn't it be wonderful as it was in original creation, as it will be for eternity? Wouldn't it be wonderful if people cared more for others than themselves and acted that way? It would take some extra time, give up some money, give up some resources, give up some of their direction, just to pause at least, or maybe do it a lot and help someone. I told them how I ran across a guy, and he was in a huge wheelchair because he weighed 300, 400 pounds, big, huge. I don't know how he got around. And he's crossing the railroad, the uh, trolley tracks, and the, the whole wheelchair got stuck. And he was forcing it, trying to get it across. And he couldn't get out of the wheelchair all that well. And he knew if he did, he wouldn't be able, very good, to, to get that huge, heavy wheelchair over there. It was motorized. <clears throat> and I came upon him across the way, and I was not busy. I was going to be late if I stopped. What did I do? I stopped. I couldn't not stop. I, I wouldn't, don't want to be a hypocrite. But it's not I don't want to be a hypocrite. hypocrite. I've been practicing it so much, I couldn't not stop. And I couldn't see the problem. And I know I was in danger because I hear, I'm hearing, ha, ha, the trolley's coming in the direction that the guy's tracks are on, uh, uh, that the guy's wheelchair is on, uh, the tracks. And I said, I ran over there. I didn't know what to do. I said, get out of the wheelchair. I just want him to get safe. If the, if the wheelchair is destroyed, so what? He's, 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 at least he's alive. And I was worried a little bit about me. I could hear that thing coming. I don't know how, much, how many seconds I had. I went down there and looked at it, and I, I assumed that it was caught on one of the tracks, between the concrete and the tracks. And I just took one corner, just a, just a wild choice, and just went up underneath it and pushed it up. And it got loose. Now I had to set it down off that place where it got caught. And then I put it down. And I told, you know, first thing I did was I told him, get out of the wheelchair. And I pushed him on the back to get him out. And he walked over to the, the sidewalk because he didn't want to lose his wheelchair. And he was going to hold on to the wheelchair. He wasn't paying attention to the sound of the trolley approaching. And uh, so I got it out and I pushed it. He came back and kind of pulled it with him, but he didn't. I got it off, and I pushed it up the ramp and over onto the sidewalk and out of harm's way. But as I passed, the trolley was right there on top of me. And I just barely got it off the tracks, onto the ramp, and onto the sidewalk. I heard the, I heard the guy going, bah, 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 with his beeper horn or whatever. <coughs> That's agape, self-sacrifice, Consider the other person. Oh, I, I, I had confidence I can get it up. But maybe it was a foolish confidence because that thing was huge. And I don't know how well I could have pushed it even if it was um, uh, free. Because I, I wouldn't try to get a guy across, the, push that across the tracks uh, on my own. But he's free. That's, wouldn't it be wonderful? So he thought that was wonderful. Then I explained to him, that's in that book. We're talking about the Bible. That makes sense. So the Bible has something to offer all mankind. And that's how it originally was coming. It was created. Anyway, not as a result of works so that no one may boast. So we're looking at, for by grace 
unmerited favor, you have been saved, literally you are having been saved through faith, and that salvation neuter tuto, not of yourselves, this not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Actually, it doesn't have it is in there. It says the gift of God is emphatic, not as, res as a result of works so that no one may boast. So why not accept what his son did for you? I want to get this in the same font size. So I'm going to put in there. Oh, same font size. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now, oh, I just, I'm not going to fight it. So on the other hand, few will decide to believe and have eternal life. <laughs> All individuals are disposed not to believe. And only a few <clears throat> will receive and have special attention from God and be drawn to John chapter 6 to choose to believe in Christ for salvation unto eternal life. Drawn in the sense of persuaded. God's going to present a persuaded, persuasive point of view. Come on, be my son. Trust in my son's payment for your sins. And to will, to choose of our own free will wills to believe in Christ for salvation <clears throat> unto eternal life. This is the point. This is mankind's condition. Since all men begin life as unbelievers, and since all unbelievers, even those who lead relatively moral lives, do the same things as godless men do, <clears throat> then there is no one righteous enough to accept, escape God's judgment and condemnation who has not trusted alone in Christ alone for the righteousness of God to be credited to their account. So we get credit. Just by believing. By God. Unto eternal life. So God says, I'm giving you credit. The credit of perfect righteousness. So that you will qualify to go to heaven. Wow. The verses here. Consideration. For in the gospel of righteousness from God. Is revealed in one to mankind. From faith to faith i.e., out of one's belief in the gospel to faithfulness in one's life to that belief, temporal life. Just as it is written in the Old Testament, the righteous will live out the length of their lives by faith. The righteous, the ones that are declared righteous because they are believers, Old Testament believers, just like Abraham was, Isaac, Abraham, Abraham and uh, Isaac and Jacob, and Adam and Eve. The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of men who suppress the truth by their wickedness. So that's what we're dealing with. We're all this way. We're all the way down to the bottom of this passage, going to Romans 2 1. A lot to read. Go ahead and read it all the way through. You therefore have no excuse. You pass judgment on someone else. For at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you're no better. You who pass judgment do the same things. So, <clears throat> I maintain, since all men begin life as unbelievers, and since all unbelievers, even those who lead faithfully, relatively faithfully moral lives, do the same things. And I say relatively because it has to be absolute. You can't say, well, he's so much better than I am, but you're not as good as God is. And you got some fault, you need it fixed. So, even those who lead relatively moral lives do the same things as godless men do. Then there is no one righteous enough to escape God's judgment, his condemnation, who has not trusted alone in Christ alone for eternal life. Romans 3, 10 and 12. Next chapter in Romans. 
As it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. And I mean, capital R. you got to be as good as God is. You know, we can't have any flawed individuals in heaven, <coughs> as far as God is concerned. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. That's the way we were. We might have a modification of that and consider ourselves uh, relatively better than the next guy. But that's not going to help that much. you got to be really outside of yourself, thinking of others as God created us to think, to help others. Outside of our caring for ourselves, we put them first. All have turned away. They have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. And God only draws some of mankind, not all. John 6, 37 to 40. All that the Father gives me will come to me. So some are given and some aren't. And whoever comes to me, literally the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me, the one having sent me literally. And this is the will of the Father who sent me, that all that he has given me, there's not all are given. So those few, narrow road, has given to me, I may not lose of it, of them, but may raise it up, raise them up on the last in the last day. And this is the will of him who sent me, alternate uh, of my Father, who sent of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So God the Father gave to his Son, his Jesus Christ, as a gift all individuals who will ever choose to come to Jesus in the sense of believing in him for eternal life, and all who come by me by faith to him. He will never cast out in the sense of never denying them eternal life. So why God? Why not? We have the key verses here in John chapter 6. I'm moving all the way down. I like to leave all the verses here so you want to go back and backtrack from 6, 614 on. They saw that this is truly Jesus and we make significant those things that he says down to these key verses that we're looking at right now. John 635, and Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. The one who comes to me shall never hunger and the one who believes in me shall never thirst at any time. But I said to you that you have also have seen me, and you believe not. And he tells the, those Jews, evidently, that were ready to throw stones at him, kill him, all that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, the coming ones to me, I will never drive away, never cast down. So the phrase read, it comes to me, <clears throat> in John 6.37, continues the figure of speech for a moment of faith alone in Jesus Christ alone, resulting in eternal life, established in verse 35. I'm going to make this a little larger there. Good. By this, continue, Jesus continues his train of thought on who will secure eternal life by stipulating all that the Father gives me <clears throat> will come to me in John 6.37, implying God's sovereign choosing of certain individuals who will then choose to come to faith in Jesus unto eternal life. The word gift. <coughs> Notice that word gift. He gives them before I was even a believer. Before I was even born. God has given me to Jesus. So the word gift is implied by the verb rendered gives. In the phrase rendered all that the Father gives me. It implies that God has evidently made provision for a number of chosen individuals. To whom he chose to come to his son by faith unto eternal life. There's no merit in me. I wasn't even born yet to do anything good. And I was born and grew up until I was 17 as an unbeliever. In John 6, 44 and 65, they will indicate that God has indeed made provision for certain individuals such that they are drawn by him, 644, and enabled.